Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about general conversion factors. How can we convert from one set of units to another set of units? And for a lot of people, this is a really daunting thing in chemistry. They think, oh, unit conversions or dimensional analysis, as people call it, and they think it's got to be difficult. But you do it all the time. If I give you two quarters and I say, find me change in a different way, and you say, well, I can give you five dimes or 50 pennies, that is a unit conversion. You're converting from the unit quarters to the unit dimes or the unit pennies. The same equivalent value, but in different units. Just like if we were talking about 12 inches and one foot. Same equivalent value, but different units. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about a very simple example here, two cups in one pint. You guys probably all know that. And if I said, hey, if I've got four cups, how many pints do I have? Most of you off the top of your head could come up with four cups is two pints. Or if I said, I've got 10 pints, how many cups do I have? Most of you could come up with off the top of your head that I've got 20 cups. But what we're gonna work on is how do we do that very methodically? How can we do that in situations where it's a little bit harder to do it off the top of our head? Like for example, if I said, hey, I've got 14.24 cups, how many pints do I have? That one might make you pause a little bit more, but the math of it is exactly the same as the math of the ones you can do on the top of your head. So let's look at an example. So we'll do an easy one. We're gonna start with eight cups. And what we wanna do is convert that into pints. How are we gonna convert that into pints? Well, in general, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our starting value and our starting units. And I like to write what I'm going for way over here. And the reason I write it way over there is because I know that at some point I'm gonna write a conversion. And a conversion is always a fraction. So I write an empty set of parentheses first. Now, <clears throat> if I'm trying to get pints, pints over here, right? It's not a fraction or anything, which means it's a numerator, right? You can really kind of, if you wanted to say pints over one, we don't really, so I'm just gonna leave that off. So it's in the numerator, which means if I want pints to be in the numerator in here, it better be in the numerator. Now what about cups? I don't want cups anymore. How do I get rid of cups? Well, in math, right, if you're trying to cancel something, one thing on top, one thing on bottom. So here, cups, again, is in the numerator. I could say it's cups over one. So if I wanna cancel it out, I need one on top, one on bottom, and I've gotta put a cups down there on the bottom. And I can cancel those cups just like that. I end up with pints, which is what? I want to get, and that's perfect. Now, many of you might look at this example tape, but Professor Clements, you haven't put in numbers yet. The numbers are what really matters in this problem. And I'm gonna come back with, no, it's not the numbers that matter, it's the units that matter. The example I love to give is if someone asks me how many children I have, and I tell them that I've got seven chickens, well, I've got the number right, but I've got the unit wrong, and it makes absolutely no sense. So. What I do when I do conversions is I make sure I get my units right first, and then I work on the numbers. So I've got my units right, my cups canceled, I get pints as I wanted to. So what am I gonna do about, <coughs> excuse me, what am I gonna do about my numbers? Well, we know there's two cups in a pint. That's an English sentence, but two cups in a pint, we could write mathematically as two cups equals one pint, and again, this is what we call a conversion equality. It's got two cups equals one pint. Now for every conversion equality, there's gonna be two conversion factors. We talk about the math of those in other places, but I'm just gonna write down the answers here. You got two cups over one pint, and you get one pint over two cups. Those are both equal to one. And some people will write those out and those are called the conversion factors. But I don't even generally write those out when I'm doing these kind of problems. I usually just do the conversion equalities because that's actually how things are presented. They're presented often in English. There are two cups and a pint or I'm going 18 miles per hour. That per is kind of like an equal sign, 18 miles equals one hour. And so it's kind of an extra step to have to do the conversion factors. But if I don't do these conversion factors, how do I know what to put into my conversion factor in my problem that I'm doing right now? How do I know what numbers go in that spot? And the answer is numbers are attached to their unit. Numbers are attached to their unit. So I've got that two in front of cups. 
That means no matter where cups appears in my conversion factor, whether it's on the top, whether it's on the bottom, I'm going to put a 2 in front of it. What you don't want to memorize ever is that a number goes on top or a number goes on bottom, or even a unit goes on top or a unit goes on bottom. What you want to do is 1, make sure your units cancel, and 2, make sure your numbers are attached to your units. That's what you want to do when you're doing conversions. So two cups is one pint. Everywhere there's a two, or I'm sorry, everywhere there's cups, I'm going to put a two in front of it. There's a one in front of pints, so everywhere there's a pint, I'm going to put a one in front of it. And we get the answer that we ex expected, which is four pints. So let's do the same kind of math in one that's a little bit more complicated, maybe has a fractional quantity. So what are we going to say? Let's say we have 14.24 pints, and we want to know how many cups is that? Well, we're going to set things up in pretty much exactly the same way. 14.24 pints over here, cups way over here, because that's what we're trying to get to. We know there's going to be a conversion factor that gets us from one to the other, or we're guessing there is. So what units go in that conversion factor? Well, if you just try to memorize things, you're like, well, pints goes on top, cups goes on the bottom, because that's what I had up there. But you don't want to do that. Don't memorize that units go someplace. Memorize that you want to cancel out units. Here, I've got pints in the numerator. If I want to cancel it out, I better get pints in my denominator. One on top, one on the bottom. Cups is over here in a numerator, which means I better have it in a numerator so that I get cups when I'm done. So now we know our units cancel out, the pints cancel out, one on top, one on the bottom, and cups gives us the cups that we want at the end. So now we can put the math in. So our conversion factor was two cups is one pint. The two is attached to cups. No matter where cups is, the two goes in front of that. So we put a two up here and a one down here. Memorize that numbers are attached to their units. It's a much better way than trying to memorize things go on top, things go on the bottom. All right, 14.24 times 2, that's going to be 28.48, 28 28.48 cups. Some of you might be wondering about significant figures. Well, if we look at our significant figures, we've got four significant figures over here. I put four significant figures in my answer, but what about this one? Is that one significant figure? Well, it turns out this one's a definition. There are exactly two cups and one pint by definition. So this one is exact, and we don't worry about the significant figures on exact numbers. So our four significant figures at the starts becomes four significant figures at the end. So that's just kind of a generic way of doing conversions. Starting unit, ending unit, try to find the fraction. So let's generalize that a little bit. And what we're going to do is general tips for conversion factors. Let's say we want to convert, oh, I don't know, we want to convert 48 inches into feet. Now, some of you could probably do that off the top of your head. You know the equality that matters here is that 12 inches is equal to one foot. Okay. But let's do it methodically. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to write our starting value and unit on the left. That's what we did on our last problems here. So we're going to start with 48 inches. And I'm just going to use I end as a shorthand there. The next thing we're going to do is write our desired units on the right. So way over here on the right, we're trying to get to units of feet. And so we're going to put feet over here. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is put a conversion factor, a blank conversion factor. For now, we're going to assume that all things can be solved with one conversion factor, but we'll see in a little bit that sometimes that's not true. So a blank conversion factor looks like a set of parentheses with a line. Some of you might have learned in a class that you draw kind of a line across and just lines separating your conversion factors. That's OK, too. I like parentheses, so that's what I use. Then we are going to fill in our units. 
and how we fill in the units is we need to make sure they cancel and make sure we get what we want. If I have inches up here in the numerator, in order to cancel it, I need inches divided by inches because that'll cancel. So inches on the top, I need inches on the bottom. So our unit that we start with goes on the bottom. In order to get feet at the end, I better have feet here so we get feet at the end. And we can verify that inches cancel one on top, one on the bottom, just like we want, and we get the feet that we want. And then the last step, which is always what people think the first step is, the last step is to fill in the numbers on the conversion. Fill in the numbers on the conversion. How do we do that? We use our equality. Our equality says 12 inches is equal to one foot. The 12 is attached to inches, which means no matter where inches appears in our conversion factor, the 12 is gonna stay attached to those inches. And I'm gonna put it here, 12 inches in one foot. <clears throat> if you do that math, you're gonna get four. Now, <clears throat> over here, we've got two significant figures. 12 inches in a foot is a definition, and so it's exact, and so I need two significant figures at the end, and so I get 4.0 feet. So that is our general pattern for doing conversion factors. Start with our value and unit on the left, our desired one on the right, fill in the units of the conversion factor first, then fill in the numbers last and do the math. All right, so here's some practice, just figuring out units on conversion factors. So what I want you to do is pause the video and see if you can just fill in the units. You don't know the numbers in these cases, just fill in the units for each one of these blanks. We're gonna ignore these last two because that's from a different lesson that I do. So just the top three. Did you do it? Did you actually pause the video? Okay, I'll give you a second chance. Go pause the video and try to do that. Okay, I, I trust you now. So what do we have? We have milliliters on the top. We wanna get rid of milliliters. One on top, one on the bottom. Our milliliters cancel now. We want liters at the end, so it's gotta be on the top there, so we get liters per milliliter. Parsecs and feet, I don't know what that conversion factor is, but I can still set up the problem. And so parsecs over here is on the top, I need a parsecs on the bottom. Feet, I'm trying to get it on the top, and so I've gotta put it on the top there. My parsecs cancel, one on the top, one on the bottom, and I'm good. Atoms and moles, again, you might not know the conversion between those, that one I do know but you can still set up the conversion factor. Atoms is on top here, we wanna cancel it out. And we want moles at the end, and so we gotta have moles on the top there. Atoms cancel out just like we want. So good practice making sure you understand how these units work. If you ended up with atoms on the top and atoms on the top again, what you're gonna end up with is square atoms. And I have no idea what a square atom is. So you need to make sure that the units you don't want anymore cancel out one on top, one on the bottom. Here's another example. I want to convert 37.5 inches into feet. What would I use as my conversion factor? So again, pause the video, figure this one out, and then start up again. Okay, so let me write it out. 37.5 inches, I'm trying to get to feet. This one looks a lot like the example we did, right? What's gotta go on the bottom? Inches on the bottom, feet on the top. I've got inches on top, inches on the bottom, and they cancel out. I know there's 12 inches in one foot, so where does the 12 go? Attached to inches. Even if inches was on top, it would get the 12. Okay? And then we do some math there. But all it was asking for is my conversion factor. I have one foot over 12 inches, which is D down here. Next example, we wanna convert 18.3 parsecs into light years. Again, we don't know the numbers, we're not asking for the numbers. What's my unit setup? Because the units are actually the most important part. Well, pause for a moment, try it out. Welcome back. Okay, what did you find? Well, if I've got parsecs on top here, I need parsecs on the bottom. This one doesn't have parsecs on the bottom. This one doesn't have parsecs on the bottom. So I've gotta put some parsecs on the bottom. Now, 
Am I starting with light years or am I starting with parsecs? If I look back up at my problem, my problem says 18.3 parsecs. And so the only one that does that is this one. My parsecs cancel and I get light years as I expect. Last one, I want to convert 400 IU of vitamin C into milligrams of vitamin C. What conversion am I going to use? Pause the video, figure out the answer, then keep going. Okay, 400 IU of vitamin C. And we're trying to get to milligrams of vitamin C. What is that going to look like? We need IU of vitamin C to cancel, one on top, one on the bottom. We want milligrams to go to the top over here. So we've got milligrams of vitamin C over IU of vitamin C, which is A over there. So that's simple conversions, one-step conversions. Sometimes we need to convert things that are a little more complicated. So here's an example where we're going to convert something with fractions. Now, when you're converting multiple units, here is the most important rule to remember. You can only convert one unit at a time. It bears repeating. You can only convert one unit at a time. Multiple units require multiple conversions. So here, we're going to convert 23.5 pints per hour. 23.5 pints per hour. And we want to convert that over here into cups per minute. Now, I can't convert pints per hour into cups per minute in one step. So I'm going to write something incorrect first, and then I'm going to erase it. Some people try to do this thing where they're saying, well, I've got pints per hour, and I, I want to cancel that out. So let me put that over here, hour and cups per minute. And then they, they just start making up numbers that try to go in there. But you can't do that. That's too many units at a time. So I'm going to cross that out, and I'm going to erase it. And what we're going to say is that since we have two units here, we've got pints and we have hours, at minimum, we're going to need two conversion factors. So at the start, I'm just going to try to write two conversion factors here. And I'm going to do one unit at a time. doesn't matter which one I do first. I can do pints first. I can do hours first. I just need to do them one at a time, one unit is one conversion. So pints, it's on top. What do I need to do to get rid of it? One on top, one on the bottom. So I'm going to put pints down here. Now, what am I converting pints into? Over here, I've got cups and I've got minutes. What is pints most directly related to? Right? It is related to cups more than it is related to minutes. So chances are I'm converting cups, pints into cups. And so I write cups up there. My pints cancel as I expect. Pints on top pints on bottom, and I end up with cups on the top, which is what I want in my final answer. Now what about hours? And if you've been following along so far, we've always said, hey, our starting unit ends up going on the bottom, so it cancels. And so people are often tempted to write hour down here. But look, I've got an hour on the bottom and an hour on the bottom. If they're both on the bottom, I'm going to end up with hour times hour on the bottom, and I'm going to have to square hours. I don't know what a square hour is. So I don't want to do that. I don't want hour on the top and hour on the bottom. I want one on the top and one on the bottom. Since I've got an hour on the bottom here in my denominator, I need an hour in the top here in my numerator. And that's how I'm going to cancel it out. One on top, one on the bottom. Now, what is hour going to be converted to? Well, if we look again at our answer, we've got minutes here. And so our hour is going to be converted into minutes. And I'm going to write that on the bottom for two reasons. One, it's the only space left. And two, 
If you look at my answer, I need minutes on the bottom in the denominator, and that's what I have. I've got hours on top and minutes in the denominator. And remember, we're always working on units first. And so we worked on our units first. We saw that they canceled and gave us what we wanted. We're left with cups in the numerator, minutes in the denominator, which is what we want in our answer. Now we put in numbers and type that into our calculator. So how many cups in a pint or how many pints in a cup? We know that there's two cups in a pint. Numbers stay attached to their unit. Two cups in one pint. What do we also know? Hours and minutes, we know there's 60 minutes in an hour. Numbers stay attached to their unit. So where does that 60 go? 60 minutes. 60 down here. Don't ever memorize the 60 goes on top, the 60 goes on bottom. Say that the 60 is attached to minutes and you'll do much better. Now, how do I put that into my calculator? Well, what I would type in my calculator is 23.5 times 2 divided by 60. Anything on the top gets a times, anything on the bottom gets a divide. The ones don't need to be in there. You can put them in there, but they don't need to be in there. If you type that into your calculator, you are going to be getting 0 0.783 cups per minute. Significant figures, if I look at my start, I've got three sig figs here. I've got something that's exact, something that's exact, and so I should end up with three significant figures at the end, which is 0.783 cups per minute. So that's how we do fractional conversions, one unit at a time. So if we have two units, a minimum of two conversions. If we had three units, if we had you know um, joules per gram degree Celsius, that's gonna be a minimum of three conversion factors convert it to some other unit. All right, how about multi-step conversions? Sometimes when we do conversions, we say, hey, let's just write this parentheses, let's put our units in. We get to a point where we say, I don't know that conversion. So we're gonna try that out and then see what do we do first. So it never hurts when you're doing a conversion, unless you know what's coming up and you know it's gonna be a multi-step, try it as a single step and see what happens. So I'm gonna try it as a single step, and I'm gonna say 1.45 times 10 to the fifth inches. I wanna convert that into miles. Now, a note about this number here, some people get really confused when they start to see scientific notation or weird numbers, milligrams or something, in their um, conversion. But don't worry about it. Remember, the numbers are stuff you type into your calculator. Your calculator doesn't care whether you type in three or you type in 1.45 times 10 to the fifth. Worry about the units. That's the part that you need to get right. The numbers and whether they're weird or big or small or scientific notation or decimal doesn't matter. It's literally just something you type into your calculator. So at first guess, you might be like, well, let me do this as we've done before. I've got an inches on the top. I need an inches on the bottom in order to cancel out. And I need miles on the top in order to get miles on the top over here. And then you think to yourself, okay, what's the conversion between miles and inches? And you know, yeah, I don't know. And you could look it up on Google, but what if you don't have that information available to you? And right, not all conversions in the world can you look up on Google, believe it or not. So sometimes you need to figure out a different way of doing things. So I have to think to myself, well, if I can't do it in one step, I might have to do it in multiple steps. And as soon as you get to multiple steps, it's a good idea to have a plan. So I'm starting with inches, and I gotta figure out what am I gonna do with those inches. And somewhere over here, I've gotta to get to miles. So I look around the world and I think, well, what can I do with inches? And you might know a few conversions off the top of your head. You might know that 12 inches in a foot. You might know that there's one inch and 2.54 centimeters. Or you might know some other conversion about inches. But we have to figure out what's gonna be the most useful one for our case. Now, it's nice here because we're given some information. We're given these two conversion equalities here, 12 inches is a foot and 5,280 feet in one mile. Notice that both of them have feet in them. Well, if they both have feet in them, then that feet can act as an intermediate between those two units. And so I can convert my inches into feet or a foot by using that first conversion of 12 inches in one foot. And then I can use the second conversion of 5,280 feet in one mile to convert my feet into miles. Now the cool thing about setting up a plan this way is that 
for every arrow that you draw here, you literally just get one conversion factor when you're solving the problem. And so <clears throat> if we start writing out our problem here, and we've got 1.45 times 10 to the fifth inches, I'm gonna write one conversion factor for this arrow, one conversion factor for this arrow, in order to get my answer over here in miles. Okay. Now, I've gotta figure out what to put in those conversion factors. It's tempting to put numbers in first. Don't do numbers first. Get your units right, then put in your numbers. What am I doing? In my first plan here, I wanted inches going to feet, and so I need to do that in my first conversion factor. I've got inches in the numerator here, which means inches needs to go in the denominator here so that they can cancel out. Now, what do I want to convert that into? It's tempting to write miles, because that's what you want to get to, but that brings us back to where we started, and we don't know that answer. But if we look at our plan, our plan tells us that we want to put foot, foot there or feet there. So we've got inches and feet. Our inches cancel. We want foot, but we don't want foot when we're done. We don't want to get rid of the foot. What do we have? We have a foot in the numerator. So that means the foot needs to go in the denominator, one on top, one on the bottom, to cancel out. Okay. Always one on top, one on the bottom. If you see two on the top or two on the bottom, something's not right, quite right. All right, what are we going to convert that into? Well, our second arrow says we're converting feet into miles. And so I can write miles there. And I get miles, which is what I want to get. My inches cancel, my feet cancel, and I'm all good. Now I can put in those numbers. I've got 12 inches in a foot. Numbers are attached to their unit. 12 is attached to inches no matter where it goes. 12 inches in one foot. 5,280 feet in one mile. Where does the 5,280 feet go? Don't memorize it goes on the top, it goes on the bottom, because it changes depending on what you're doing. Memorize that it stays attached to its unit. 5,280 is attached to feet, and so it stays attached to feet when I do it down there. How would I type this into my calculator? I would type 1.45 times 10 to the fifth, and I use this notation because a lot of calculators use that. It's whatever notation your calculator uses, but you want to get used to using the built-in notation. Don't generally type times 10 and then the caret and the five. You'll end up with order of operation errors. You want to type in the E, whatever your built-in scientific notation is. Then divide by 12, because it's in the new denominator, then divide by 5,280. Now there's ways of doing this with parentheses to use the times on the bottom, but what I do is anything on top gets a times, anything on the bottom gets a divide, and it all works out. When you do that math, the answer that you get is 2.29 miles. Three significant figures to start, three significant figures at the end. The other two are exact, and so we don't have to worry about them. So that is how we do multi-step conversions. Try it as a single step first. If you don't know that conversion, see if there's a path. I know how to convert inches into feet. Does that help me? Oh, I can convert feet into miles and so you can move along. Make sure your units work out first before you put into the numbers. And remember, you can only convert one unit at a time. Hopefully this helped out. And as we move forward in the class, a lot of what we do is conversion. So you'll see this pattern over and over and over again, especially in chapter seven, when we talk about moles and atoms, and chapter nine, when we talk about concentration units. Thanks.